Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here, and in this episode of the Automation Minute, we're going to take a look at the L6 series of Control Logic's processors, specifically the Series A version. Now, if we look at this one here, we can see this is a 5561 or L61, and we can see we have the same indicators run, I.O., Force, RS-232, Activity, Bat, and OK, as the L55 had. And uh, we have the same key switch, again, the same key as the Slick 500. And uh, if we open up the door, here we can see a spot for the battery and an RS-232 port. Now, if we uh, come over here and look at the side here, we'll see the label. We can see the catalog number in the series. We can see the barcode number we'll use for warranty uh, issues. We can also see, um, you know, the back pain current drawer that this one uses, the firmware as it came from the factory. Uh, we can also see the manufacturing date. And uh, if we look at the bottom of this unit, we'll see that this unit is a little different because this unit, instead of having a modular memory board, when you buy an L6, you buy it with so much memory and you cannot expand it. However, the advantage is that you can now use a compact flash card for your non-volatile memory as your EEPROM, as a way to store a second copy on the program of the program in your processor, or as a way to um, you know, send somebody an updated program you know, easily. Now the bad news is like the original PLC-5, it's in the bottom of the unit. If we take a look at the chassis here, we can see, um, yeah, there's no hole. <laughs> you can't put that in while it's plugged in. And that's kind of a bad idea. You have to stop your process and rip your processor out just to put a, a non-volatile memory chip in. So that's pretty bad. Um, you know, I joke around with people. I'm like, they did this with the original PLC-5 and they came out with a new platform PLC-5 and they put it in the front. And uh, so that guy who did the original PLC-5, he must have needed a job. So they must have had him design this because it's back in the bottom again and it's not easy to get to. And in this case, I got to yank the processor to take it out. So it was a pretty, um, it was a good feature to have, but a lousy place to put it. And, uh, but uh, that's where it goes right there. And, um, you know, that's, uh, I don't know what else to say about the L6. I just uh, want to remind you that when you bought an L6, unlike when you bought a uh, when you bought an L55 or L1, you buy it at a particular memory size, and that's it. You cannot expand the memory. You can add the non-volatile, but you cannot expand the memory. And you know, back onto that compact flash. Now, if you have a product line that makes hundreds of thousands of dollars an hour, don't go out and buy a five-dollar memory card to put in here as your as your mission-critical non-volatile memory. It just makes no sense. I don't know what people think when they do that. Um, now, if you're only going to use it for a momentary or for testing or just to transfer a program, use an off-the-shelf card. That's great. But if this is going to be on a mission-critical system, use an industrial compact flash card. Um, you know, I don't know how many people, uh, how many times people buy a uh, you know four or five thousand dollar processor and they want to use a five dollar card instead of a hundred dollar card in it. It just seems silly to me.